Good afternoon, everyone. Sinead here with Free Tours by Foot London en route to doing much, much more filming around London. But for this week's journey, I wanted to bring you back. Over the last three years, we visited some iconic pubs here in London. And I wanted to take you back on a little trip down memory lane. And we're going to put a highlight of eight of our most historic pubs in London. Now, you all know I like a gin, ladies and gents. So these are some of my top favorites. And you must put this on your list when you're heading around London. Very pleasant meander, as it were. And look here in front of me, the Dickens Inn. So originally a warehouse building, and some also suggest after that it was used as a brewery. Thought to have been built in the 1700s as a tea factory or a local brewery. Years later converted into a local tavern with the very traditional sawdust, sawdust strewn floors. Three tiers of wooden panelling there. It's like a barn if you like. And the thatch roof. 18th century timber framed warehouse opened as I said in 1976 by Cedric Charles Dickens and he was the grandson of Charles Dickens and let me just show you the atmosphere inside and how pretty it is now as ever I'm going to be quite discreet about who I film here I don't want to disturb anyone in the pub pub and restaurant so I'll give you an idea of the so it says book for your Sunday roast found on the top floor wow it looks delicious and it's called at the grill in the Dickens Inn so there's a Pickwick bar here as well named after the Pickwick papers of course that he had written in a village outside of Bath actually Pickwick village and this will give you an idea of the drinks menu and here's the food menu I had heard they did an amazing mixed fish, fish basket and just your standard traditional all day English breakfast, loaded burgers, beef burgers, classic chicken burger. There's the beautiful outdoor space here on the main floor, the ground floor. And this one here, plenty of seats available. Hi! <laughs> and if you're heading inside, look at these gorgeous little balconies now you're allowed to come out on here but i think they close them at nine o'clock at night because in the 18th century it would have been very typical for people to dine here in candlelight but of course a slight paranoia about fire and you'll know from a lot of my videos how many buildings were destroyed by fire in london over the centuries so it says there the area closes at 9 30 and then you just see the beautiful and we'll get some views inside, but let's have a look around. I'm going to take you up there now shortly. But they play all the football here as well. They do Sunday roast. They do private parties. Look how pretty you guys. Isn't it lovely? And these old timber beams. And the old wood. It looks like a barn. You can get all your sports on the TV in here. I'm sure it's quite lively for Premier League games. Let's have a little look around. There's a private room down here. It's called the Copperfield Bar. And that gives you an idea where you can book for your private function. But of course, everything dates. I mean, reminds us of the incredible historic maritime history in London in the area so they are closed here at the moment but this is like a little private dining area you can have private functions and private parties they're very popular as well of course with office staff I guess they do quite a lot of Christmas parties here I have my own sister and three friends coming over this weekend that we're all heading to a Coldplay concert actually so I'm gonna bring them here and show them what this is all about now let's head upstairs now the toilets downstairs Oh wow, you have a lot of old, actually you could feel like you're almost on a ship. It's incredibly done in here. Let's have a quick look. Ooh, somebody's jiving. What's happening here? What an amazing picture. Now we'll give you a look around here. The Queen Alexandria and S.M. Blythe. 
And then there is another floor where they do the, oh, this is the Pickwick bar. So I think this is where they do the roast dinners, you guys. And you get to, it's a carvery, I believe. So you get to kind of a self-service type of thing. So there's plenty of seating and plenty of to do here. Hi. Um, it looks like it could accommodate quite a lot of people. They have a quiz night as well. Ooh, this might be my new local Goodbye. place, my lovelies. Now let me just show you outside. And then we'll head around the other side of St. Catherine Docks. Okay. Let's wait till them. Seems to be quite narrow out here, but look at your beautiful seating here. This is where you can come. Yeah. Idyllic view. No smoking up here. This is your view from the seat. The tower bridge in the back. How pretty. Beautifully decorated, I must say. And that, you have a choice of different tables up here. Wonderful place to come after you've had a little adventure around St. Catherine's Dock. Let's head back downstairs. Now, plenty of seating here today, but it's all in the shade, of course. So if you like the sun, some people don't. I have a lot of friends who are hiding from the sun. They prefer the autumn and the winter. Me personally, I love the summer. Right, so let's head over that bridge and along the other bars and restaurants. I'm going to show you this guy chilling out on his boat, by the way. So keep that on the list. Isn't it beautiful? The Dickens Inn. Now we'll get one last look at it down here. Just along here, and go swing around. And even the courtyard itself, you'll see when it, you can imagine when it's dimly lit by these beautiful Victorian style lamps, how pretty they are. But look at that, how lovely. So just a short minute walk brings us to this stunning, stunning location, folks. And I wanna get you out of the sun it's a beautiful morning here in London, folks. The pub isn't even open yet, but I've had permission to film inside. Exclusive access, thanks to the wonderful manager in there. But the pub dating back to 1520, claiming to be the oldest Riverside Inn in London. Now frequented by the most terrifying pirates in British history here and this is something I love that they do they do these in all the older pubs in London and just to give you some sort of perspective of how long this is standing here it gives you a list of every king and queen that has reigned since the prospect of Whitby well the pub on the site has remained so all the way back from Henry VIII so let's head in and I'll show you around the most notorious pirate smuggling pubs in London and we're heading in so the staff are still kind of setting up for the day so we may meet a few of them along the way but immediately you're struck by all the references to its nautical history as you walk right in the door Look over here it's a statue of Queen Elizabeth a beautiful painting of Queen Elizabeth II so we're going to have a look at all these little placards along the way. Welcome to the Prospect of Whitley, built in 1520 and originally named the Pelican. Whopping residents made their living from the river. Fishermen, sailors, sail makers and boat builders, also smugglers, thieves and pirates. Amazing nautical history. And immediately you're struck with this kind of presence of this sense of the devilish activity that would have taken place in here. So the time flooring is original to the first pub, but these stunning bar beams, these wooden beams. And as we're looking around here, this is the, for me, the icing on the cake. Now, this is not usually open to the public, folks. 
because of high tide. So here we have just what I said there. The flagstone floor of the bar has been trodden by the widest variety of patrons over 500 years. Reputedly, the longest pewter bar in Europe. Beautiful steam pewter bar as well. I mean, the decor in here alone is worth coming to visit, folks. So the pewter top bars were a commonplace in the 19th century, but this is one of the few that have survived 20th century modernization. And is the thought to be the longest in Great Britain. Okay. Well, reputedly also, according to the manager, in Europe. Now look at this on this stunning day. So here's another little bit of information before we head out here. Directly alongside deck is where a ship called Prospect moored for many years, built and registered in Whitby, Yorkshire. She ferried coal to London from Newcastle. The pub took its name when it was rebuilt in the 1770s. So technically there has been a pub on this site, however, since the 1520s. And look at this. Oh my days. I can't believe, literally two minutes ago, folks, when I first came here, the River Thames now is floating up to where I was. I could have been swept away, my lovelies. How great would that have been? Now let's have a look inside here. So this was apparently the Smuggler's Bar. And they use this quite frequently for private parties, ladies and gents. And this is a throwback to the pirate past. So away from the ears, of the main crowd downstairs, many a smuggler's plot has been thought to be hatched in this room. The infamous pirate, Captain Kidd, was a regular patron in the Wapping hostilities. Okay. Infamous smuggler's room. An atmosphere of illicit activity in here, actually. Partially why I'm drawn to it, I think. <laughs> it's like a den of iniquity, isn't it? Like a CD bar. I can imagine them um, drinking quarts of ale and rum and singing. What an incredible place. Yeah, I'm truly blown away by this one. Now, this is a bit more formal, if you like, for formal dining. Look at your views from the river. Ladies and gentlemen, please keep this on your list. You cannot miss out on this incredible experience. And I promise you, it's got the most warm, comforting. Each room has a different vibe to it. It really does. Um, I'm going to say the smuggler's room is probably my favorite, but I don't think that will be a surprise to any of you. Now, nestled into this amazing corner is the town of Ramsgate pub. Steeped in history, we are of course going to be taking a look inside. But first, I'm going to be bringing you down to one of the most historic places in London. We're heading down the steps of Wapping Old Stairs. Now down this rather seedy looking corridor, we are actually going to take steps down to where at low tide you can actually sit down on one of the private beaches here in London. This is Wapping Old Stairs and there has been a tavern on the site since 1545 folks. It's through this, in this very alleyway where it's, well it's said that Captain Thomas Blood, the man who stole, the only man ever to steal the crown jewels, was apprehended attempting to get away from London via the steps here and down onto this, what we like to call, oh, still high tide, little private beach. Right, so it is now almost three o'clock. So we're going to have to wait another hour or so, but I want you to notice the difference between both. In the next hour, I'm going to be able to take you down when the tide is lower onto one of the secret beaches in London. These are also the steps where convicts 
who would have been kept in the basement of this very pub in prison cells would be banished to Australia. And those convicts would be brought down and down these steps to board their ships, never to see the United Kingdom again. Now we all wish we could get to Australia free of charge. How does that sound? Right. So just as we're waiting for low tide, let me just walk you through here. Now there's quite a few people inside, so again, I don't want to be intrusive, but I want to take you through the 16th century tavern. And it was named after the Ramsgate fishermen who left their catches here before being taken to Billingsgate Fish Market. It's also in this very pub in 1688 that the famous Judge Jeffreys, James II's unpopular Lord Chancellor, was seized as he tried to flee in the continent, trying to avoid the troops of William III. He reportedly disguised himself as a sailor, but he was recognized actually by one of the criminals he had previously convicted. He begged for mercy from the mob, but Judge Jeffreys hadn't shown too much mercy to hundreds of other people he condemned to execution at Execution Dock. He was eventually imprisoned in the Tower of London. He died of kidney disease in 1689. Now they had originally buried him in St. Peter of Vincula, the church in the tower. However, they removed his body. He's now buried in St. Mary Alderman Berry. But I just wanted to show you the atmosphere of this gorgeous pub that dates all the way back to the 16th century. It's also, hi Sid, it's also in the basement of this very pub where criminals were kept. And those criminals that were imprisoned in the basement of the pub eventually will head down the steps onto the River Thames to be deported to Australia. Now these are some of the pictures inside. There's Judge Jeffries on the right. I don't want to disturb the locals. They're having a nice pint. Now as it's such a beautiful day, you have this gorgeous smoking, well not a smoking terrace, no smoking rather. This outdoor terrace here where you can enjoy a drink whilst waiting for low tide or high tide. Look at this beautiful view right here, you guys. So that's why I'm still waiting for low tide, but it's getting better. See the steps there. Now this charming local is local to a lot of East End Londoners and you can get some gorgeous views of the terrace here in the Ramsgate Tavern. But where I'm taking you next is down here to what was the Turk's Head. Now the Turk's Head was a traditional alehouse as well, no doubt frequented by all the workers in the area that worked on the docks and on the river. So a very famous pub and it's where we believe the last quart of ale would have been consumed by the condemned prisoners. Look at this charming pub. I mean, Wapping has, honestly, guiding in London just blows me away every time. Once you're looking for things in London and you discover so many amazing places and wait till I show you what I found. This is mind blowing. It's probably one of the most beautiful little bistros I've ever come across. So what was traditionally an ale house, there's a little bit of history of it. The former public house has a special history. During World War II, it was run by an eccentric landlady called Mog Murphy and stayed open all hours for service personnel seeking news of their loved ones. So it's got its tragic history there as well. But after a vigorous campaign in the 1980s led by Maureen Davis and the Wild Women of Wapping, the Turks Head Company, a charity they set up to improve local life, brought the, bought the derelict building from the council and restored it. The income from the rents of the cafe and stu studios above pays for charitable activities. So I actually wandered in here because it's also where they filmed the movie Legend, where Tom Hardy plays the Cray twins and they have a notorious fight inside the building with about six other gang members who come heavily armed. But look what I have found, ladies and gents. I mean, you go in there just because I'm looking for Tom Hardy in the legend and you find this stunning English French slash French bistro 
which is run by a wonderful couple called JJ and Philippe. And I just want to take you in here first to show you the what would have been the former pub section. Another stunning French bistro, which is open daily for breakfast, brunch, and for dinner. And it's quite possibly one of the most charming East End of London places I have actually found en route. The selection of wines here and food, a hidden gem in the East End, but it has an amazing diverse menu which features smoked almonds, charcuterie boards, an amazing French onion soup, vegan options of course, and homemade delicious desserts. And I was talking to JJ, he actually made all the brunch desserts this morning himself, but look at this stunning space. Completely decorated, an independent business. And this is where you come for your French I'm drinking coffee there in my little seat. Just want to show you this little horse box here. That's where they serve the coffee from and it's fully heated. But what a place for a lovely romantic meal. But the most, the nicest place to take a little break and possibly have a bite to eat or a refreshment, a little gin and tonic if you'd like, is right down here. Look, it tucked away here down in this beautiful little corner, the Hollybush pub. Isn't that gorgeous? So it's one of those real traditional, old fashioned public houses, ladies and gents. The perfect place to take a little break. It's been frequented by so many famous writers over the years, including Dr. Samuel Johnson, who was inspired and most of his books were written up here even though we all know he lived in Gough Square in the city of London. Dr Johnson's museum is located there where his cat hunches. You'll see more about that on my City of London walk. And James Boswell is known to have drank in here as well. But George Romney, famous painter, would have frequented here. But this pub dates back, you guys, to the 1640s. I mean, how immense. So we might have a charming little look inside. We'll see if they allow me film anything in there. I mean, what a treat, you guys. An unruly society ensued, so the Gin Act was passed to actually regulate the production of gin. It is estimated there was up to six to seven thousand. And is reputed to be the most haunted pub in London, ladies and gentlemen, with some amazing curiosities inside. This is the incredible Viaduct Tavern, named after the Holborn Viaduct that was also erected the exact same year, 1869. I just want to show you stunning interior of this pub. Look at this amazing place you guys. One of the last remaining gin palaces left in London. Now it did attract a rather unruly set of customers and even the landlady didn't trust them and she wouldn't trust her own bar staff. So one of the more amazing features inside this establishment you guys is this gin booth or this toll booth that's situated right at the back of the pub. Now I want to show you this, look at the stunning stained glass. So just to give you an idea, even the landlady didn't even trust her own bar staff. So what she would do is she would sell gin tokens inside this booth. All the money that was exchanged inside in the establishment had to be exchanged for tokens inside this booth. Now another story features the incredible sculptures of this area which are right up on top and I wanted to show you some of these. These are allegedly, according to Lorenzo the bartender, the executioner judges that would have condemned hundreds and hundreds of people to death in the Old Bailey. 
and indeed in Newgate Prison. Now I'm going to bring you right in front of the stunning Renaissance painting and if you look very very closely I'm going to bring you right up front you are going to see damage to that painting that is right there and that damage is actually a bullet hole and during a disagreement in here a world war one soldier discharged his weapon and that bullet hole remains to this day so i'm just going to follow lorenzo down you guys and i want to show you right down here these alleged prison cells ladies and gents but where do they come from are they part of the old Com uh, Gilsper Street Contour Prison um, or are they part of the Old Bailey? Now I'll let you decide. We know that they have had mediums have come in here and they have been overwhelmed with the sense of a presence in the area um, allegedly collapsing at the, uh, the feeling of so, many, so much spiritual activity. Now as you can see it's obviously the beer cellar right now but look at this noose just as we head in. Now he's going to light some candle for us to give us the full effect, you guys. But this is desperately, desperately creepy in here. Thank you, Lorenzo. Now, the other ghost story we heard of that took place in here is a former landlord came down here one night and when he was here, all of a sudden the lights completely went out the door slammed and he was left alone here in the pitch dark then somebody tipped him on the shoulder and he heard someone say ha ha it's only two of us down here now now lorenzo was just in here with me thank you lorenzo for the dramatic effect i am getting a little bit creeped out actually Lorenzo told me that ordinarily it's never this cold in here and there is a little flicker of the lights as well ladies and gents and they also said they had a flood last night here and over the years paranormal activity is always associated with flooding. Now we know that a tributary of the fleet that runs under this building so this is one section now allegedly this was used and everything I'm saying is allegedly, ladies and gents, please don't pull me up on this, these are all ghost stories, that this was used for throwing down scraps of food to the prisoners that were inside these prison cells. Now, an incredible place, and if you're lucky enough to be in here, it is very, very eerie. So welcome to the Fitzroy Tavern, which can rightly claim to be one of London's greatest bohemian intellectual and literary haunts. I just wanted to take you upstairs. I got a bit peculiar about filming, so I need to do this quite quickly, <laughs> you guys. But I wanted to show you some of these incredible people. There's Walter Sickert, of course, the painter and customer of the Fitzroy Tavern. Walter Sickert, of course, was the closely connected to the Jack the Ripper case. Uh, Prince Albert Victor, Duke of Clarence and Avon, actually worked in this area the grandson of Queen Victoria and he had been bizarrely claimed to be one of Jack the Ripper's, a suspect in the Jack the Ripper case. These incredible pictures. Now I wanted to show you just how beautiful it is up here. Look at this. Isn't this wonderful? Let's see some of the pictures over here. Just a good couple of others there. There's Virginia Woolf, Jacob Epstein, and of course that amazing picture there of George Orwell. See so you have uh, so much beautiful space up here to have a drink. It's almost like an elegant library, isn't it? Let's see what we've got over here. Henry Fassell. Ford Maddox Brown, Wyndham Lewis. Look how beautiful. Thank 
keep this on your list, you guys. It's an amazing place to visit. And it's this, they have amazing food here as well. And apparently the mussels are spectacular here. Something that's very rare in London nowadays, an open fire. in someone's house. Look at this wonderful special room, then like a little library. Mm -hmm. There's a lovely couple here and I don't want to invade their privacy. They didn't expect someone coming in here with a camera on top of them. But alas, it's beautiful. And here is Dylan Thomas and a quote from Dylan Thomas that reads, a good poem is a contribution to reality. The world is never the same once a good poem has been added to it. A good poem helps to change the shape of the universe, helps to extend everyone's knowledge of himself and the world around him. Dylan Thomas. How beautiful in this little quaint library area. I'll just give you one last look. Just trying to be respectful of these lovely people here beside me. How lovely. Just met the most wonderful couple who have obviously been married for maybe 20, 30 years and they're heading out to a theatre date after having a wonderful lunch here on Valentine's Day. How lovely. So in the 1930s and the 1940s, the Fitzroy Tavern was a hub for many of the leading creative and literary figures of the day. The likes of George Orwell, Dylan Thomas and Augustus John. And we've just seen some of his work there, his painting of WB Yeats regularly met here to enjoy its convivial and bohemian atmosphere. Look at this, ladies and gents. Now this is actually open to the public, it's not a private room. Can you imagine having a hot brandy or a hot port here in the middle of the winter and just sitting by the fire? The wonderful bartender here as well, he's so sweet and knowledgeable about the actual pub itself. What a beautiful hidden gem. So keep that on the list, the Fitzroy Tavern here on Queen Charlotte Street. is obviously not open, but this is Gordon's Wine Bar, right here on Villiers Street. So, they have outdoor seating available. Now, the entrance at the front is obviously not open, but this is Gordon's Wine Bar, right here on Villiers Street. So, they have outdoor seating available. We're going to head down these steps. Let me take you into this amazing place. Now, some of you will have seen this before. It is always busy stunningly beautiful inside here but I did ask a chap so this is the outdoor seating area but we're gonna head inside and look at this you guys okay mind your steps it's quite steep coming in here look at this I remember the first time I saw this it literally took my breath away so you have an amazing selection of wines here I'll show you that in one minute but look at this amazing atmosphere. But the icing on the cake is coming right now. So I'm just filming a little short. Is that okay, you guys? Thank you. So look at the amazing atmosphere inside here, ladies and gents. Look at the images on the wall. There's Queen Victoria. And then, of course, I'm not going to disturb the clients now who are having their lunch, but uh, I want to just take you around here because you're literally underground and there is no windows. How epic is this in here? Look at these old school photos of the Queen, and Churchill. She's so beautiful in here. I don't want to disturb these ladies here beside me. And look at this. If you walk in around here, to give you an idea, it's a little dark now. I just want to bring you into the little caves in here. So you have your own little place to have a romantic date right in here. Inside in Gordon's. Look how pretty. And in that prison cell at the back, you can hire that. Now the roof is quite low uh, for uh, your own lunch and your own menu. But look behind you there. Isn't that beautiful? It's very dark, so I'm hoping you can see the atmosphere in here. But you're literally underground. How epic is that? Here, the beautiful Gordon's Wine Bar. Now, not only that, you get to have an amazing... Oh, sorry, love. There's an amazing selection of food that you can order as well. 
indoors and outdoors. Look at those cheeses. Wow. And they do table service, cheese boards. So make put this on your list of places to visit next time you come to London. One more shot around here where it's a bit more brighter and you can get a better view of it inside of your little caves where you can sit and enjoy a beautiful glass of wine from this incredible menu board. The staff are wonderful in here too. So put this on your list. Welcome to Gordon's Wine Bar, ladies and gents. Right. And up you go and out here to where you can order as well outside and lounge here. And that is pretty much it. Only a little five minute video but to show you one of the most beautiful places to drink in London.